So how would you describe your style, John? Where did you get your style? My from? style? Well, it's a mixture. Of, I try to play whatever style is expected of me, really. You know, if you play in a trad jazz band, you do a bit of that. And if you play in a, a folky type band, I work with um, uh, Roy Harper for a couple of years. And when I worked with, uh, did some recording with Joan Armour Trading, made an album with uh, Maddie Pryor, uh, and another band called The Camera, and I did two albums with them. Um, they were all sort of folky type people. You just adapt to your style to try and play what they what they want and what they expect. If you do an album like I did with a rock and roll band called The Flying Saucers, uh, and they used to do rockabilly stuff and, and all that, and, it, and you try to play in that style. You just adapt your style to whatever. But, um, just depends what's expected of you, really. So do you have particular drummers that you're very fond Ooh, of? Oh, yeah, I do have drummers I like. I like... Um, I like Jim Keltner in particular. Uh, I did a tour with the Patos. We did a tour of, well, it was a world tour, but all, everything went absolutely tits up in Australia and we got deported. So we never did the um, Australian, we never finished the Australian leg of the tour and we never went to Japan and we never did the, the European leg of the tour because of this... Um, uh, this mix-up in Australia with um, herbal tea and, um, and marijuana. <laughs> we were smoking herbal tea. And, um, yeah, we all got deported. So um, that was never done. But Jim Keltner was on that tour. And he did the first load of gigs um, with Jimmy Carstein, who was a, another drummer, he was a great drummer. He died last year, unfortunately. But Carstein used to play with, he, he worked with Taj Mahal, he worked with the Everly Brothers, and he worked with JJ Kale, and he worked with Joe Cocker and loads of people. And um, anyway, Keltner, I used to stand behind his kit. He was up on this sort of riser. I used to stand behind his kit and just listen to what he was doing every night. He just had this touch and this magic about him that nobody else has, I've never heard anybody else play like him. He can adapt himself to doing whatever, you know, and it, it just absolutely wonderful drummer. I would say he is my all time favorite sort of drummer who's still out there working and doing things. Uh, and there's other people, uh, Phil Collins drumming, I like completely different sort of style. Um, I like a lot of jazz drummers. I like Elvin Jones, who I met once at um, a club in in New York. Went up and introduced myself in a in a non sober attitude, and um, he invited me round his house the next day. And when I sobered up the next day, I was so nervous about meeting him and everything. I I didn't go. I, he gave me his phone number. I, to phone him up and go around his house and and play some drums and this sort of thing. Brian Bennett went apparently and went down in his basement with Elvin and he had all these Gretsch kits, some still in their packing cases. And um, who else do I like? I like him. There's loads, loads of loads of great drums around. Loads of great English drums around as well. Bryson Graham, uh, another old friend of mine. He's played in Spooky Tooth. He was a great drummer. Um, who else? Ian Wallace, Mitch Mitchell, all of whom I've doubled up with. Yeah, you know, two two drum kit bands. But Jimmy Carstein, yeah, once Keltner left this Joe Cocker tour, I went on and played with Jimmy Carstein. So I used to go on with uh, Pato as, as a support band, come off, cunningly disguise myself by changing my shirt to a, a shirt of a different colour and then go on with Joe as well. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it really.